when, when studying the Bible, physical physics are uh, overlapped and underlapped by spiritual physics. What is physics? The science of time, the science of matter, the science of things. And let, let's look at when Peter writes his book. He writes it with the spiritual physics in mind as well as the uh, daily physics in mind. In First Peter, the central theme was suffering. In Second Peter, the central theme is knowledge of the last days. The word known and knowledge appears 16 times. Known and knowledge appears 16 times in this epistle. Uh, Peter refers to the serious danger originating inside of the group that, of apostasy and false teachers. This epistle was written to expose the faults and to instruct Christians as to what they should do to combat uh, the ugly threat of apostasy which is straying away from what the Bible says. That's what apostasy is. At about the time Peter was writing this epistle, Paul was imprisoned by Nero, and Peter wrote only two New Testament books. Yet more personal information is recorded in the New Testament concerning Peter than that which is written about any other of the twelve original apostles of Christ. Peter soon to be martyred, chapter 1 and verse 14. Nevertheless, resist, resist in, uh, in the exceeding great and precious promises, 1 and 4. He said, stay in the exceeding great and precious promises. For many years, space science, CR, uh, Campbell John was an atheist. And 2 Peter 3 8 uh, bothered him. But the more he investigated the velocity of light, and the more was convinced that there is a God. Now, as a Christian, he makes this enlightening observation. Isn't it funny? that the truth is in this Bible. But the unbeliever is not going to open this Bible or look at it. But this is where the truth is. Anybody who is an atheist or an agnostic, if they would give credence to reading this Bible, this Bible would change their heart and mind. Because this Bible is the truth. And the Bible says that every other man be a liar. It's false. Everything a other man says other than the Bible is false. But let every man be a liar. Suppose you went 30 day trip into outer space. 15 days out into space and 15 days returning to earth. Let's assume you could come near to the velocity of the speed of light which is 99 plus 24 nines when you return to earth your clock on your time clock has slowed down sufficiently at that speed 30,000 years of earth's time to have gone by but you were only gone 30 days thus in 30 days 30,000 years elapsed. Peter said in 3 and 8, One day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Who told Peter this? God had to. It was not until 1905 that Albert Einstein had uncovered the secret that time dilation is possible. Paul writes in 1 Timothy 6, 15-16, The King of Kings, 
who only hath immortality dwelleth in the light which no man can approach. Unto Paul is saying that no man can approach God's physically. This is true. Man in, in his body, in his material structure, cannot get into a suppress the light in which God lives. This community, this commentary, excuse me, continued on page, next page. A thousand years is as one day. Wow. With the Lord. Matter, and we are matter, cannot surpass the velocity of speed, of light. As soon as it does, it is no longer matter as we know it. It becomes energy. And at this point, and it will exist forever because it has gone into what is called the fourth dimension. Time has stopped. Then whatever that matter is, it has become immortal. Wow, I'm looking for that day when I come immortal. My wife is now immortal. She is now living in, the time has stopped for her, and she is now living in the forever, the energy of the forever. <coughs> God tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. In the subatomic physics, science now realizes that everything in this world is made of energy. Energy in science is embodied in one word. It's called light. And God is light. And He's forever. He is the forever being. In 1 John 1, 5, the Bible reveals that God is light. And if He's light, He is everlasting. And he says he's everlasting. And we don't treat him as everlasting. We even say his name in vain. People say his name in vain all day long you hear it. And uh, if they only knew what they were saying. According to uh, the time differential between our time and God's time. A day with God is as a thousand years. How long ago did Jesus Christ uh, leave this earth? By his time. 1,987 days ago. He hasn't been gone but two days yet. By his clock. Now I'm reading from Salem Kirvin's Bible, which I got in the 70s. So 70s, 80, 90, 2000. This is 30 years old. But it still hasn't added enough time to make another day. Uh, by his clock. Now do you think that he has had time to forget you? Has he not still bore the, the uh, memory of the cross? Is it occurred less than two days ago? Realizing this doesn't... This... Uh, bring our Savior a little closer to us? He is not somebody who died 2,000 years ago in God's time. And it's God's time that's important here. This only happened two days ago. In this time frame, just the day before yesterday, Christ died for me. This commentary begins on page 514 it did and I was reading that as I was uh, reading the commentary and we switched from book to book and but uh, get one of these Salem Kirby Bibles if you can find one I don't know if they're still in print they're still being printed if you can't find one uh, put a hook out on the internet today and ask somebody if they've had a preacher in their family die who may have had a Salem Kirby Bible. Uh, 
thousands of people had them, but you take thousands of people and put them into where millions of people are, that thousand people become small. And that's almost like saying that when you get out in eternity, that time has slowed down, and what is a day on this earth is as a thousand years over there. And it has sped up in a sense there and slowed down here. So, studying the physics of what is being said. Now, uh, the second epistle of Peter in chapter 3, uh, Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. How do you stir up the mind in you that is pure? When did you get that mind? I got mine November 5th at 3 o'clock in the morning, 1972. You say, How, what do you mean, Peter, by that? Well, I wrecked my car and I got out and I looked up to heaven and God said to me, your number's up. And I said, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. And he did. Immediately, I was a new creature in God. Immediately, all my sins were cast in a sea of forgetfulness, and I became a new creature. Just hours before that, I was guzzling from a fifth and uh, getting drunk and doing all the things, and cursing, swearing, and playing gambling, and doing all that. And uh, 15 minutes later, after I left that place, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm born again. All that was behind me through my whole life, lying, cheating, stealing, doing everything I did through my life, was gone. It's behind me. It disappeared. It was in that, that time frame of that, like a thousand years, is as a day. And it was gone. And I was freed from that penalty of that, which would be hell, fire, and damnation forever. That's the penalty of dying in sin. But I didn't die in sin. So 30 days uh, had elapsed, and Peter said in 3 and 8, that one day is like a thousand years with the Lord. So if 30 days had elapsed, 30,000 years in God's time had elapsed. Because his days are a thousand years. And our days are just ours. So, uh, let's go over to, uh, we're in Second Peter, and chapter 3. When we leave Peter, we come to, we leave Peter, we come to 1 John, and, uh, one and two. First uh, John chapter one. He said that which was from the beginning. Now from what we just read in this, this is uh, brings it up closer to us than uh, thousands of years ago. It brings us up to today if you want to know the truth. That which was from the beginning, that which was from the beginning. That means it came from the beginning and it's still here. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. Our hands have handled of the word of life. That is this book that we have right here in our hand. That God has revealed it from mouth to mouth. And now in these last days, he has left us a book called the Holy Bible. And we ought to use it. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen, and heard, 
declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ there is no way to the Father except through the Son and the Bible said here but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin John 1 1 through 7 and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full if there is any joy in your life at all if it's not from God it's not joy real joy is from God this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all no darkness at all it's a growing process for a new Christian. I had darkness still in my life after I got saved. He said, what was that darkness, Peter? It was from the outside. It was smoking those cigarettes. And God dealt with me a whole year saying, how are you going to go up to the jail and preach if you're still smoking? And, I, and that was a, a problem for me. I had to fight that battle and get over it. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So I can say I have fellowship with God and I'm puffing a cigarette and blowing smoke in his face? No, I don't have fellowship. My fellowship is broke because my desire is more to use a worldly thing, that cigarette and smoke that, than it is to follow God. When you put God in the place of the cigarette, then you're having fellowship. When you put the cigarette in front of God, then you're not having fellowship. You're fellowshipping with the world. And the two don't mix. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So do you consider, Brother Peter, me, that smoking is a sin? Yes, I do. Tell me why. First, if all other reasons, first, it's a killer for your health. You cannot get, develop all kinds of things from smoking. Second, if you can buy a pack of cigarettes today at $5 and you can't tithe, on Sunday because you don't have enough money to tithe you burn God's money up with a cigarette pack and don't be surprised when you come down with cancer and don't be surprised when you get a lung disease don't be surprised when you can't walk a mile without dying don't be surprised at the results of smoking if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, he makes him a liar and his word is not in us. Wow, man, those are positive words. Positive. It, well, they're like a yin and a yang. They're positive and negative that all come out at the other end, though, positive. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is a propitiation. That means he stood in our place for our sin. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This one man, Jesus, took all the sins of the whole world upon him on the cross. For three hours on this earth, there were total darkness. What was that total darkness brought on this earth from? 
sin is black dark. The sin came out, and for three hours as he hung on the cross, there was total darkness on this earth. 100% darkness, total. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfect. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Jesus did not watch television. Jesus did not smoke cigarettes. You say, but Jesus drank wine. He drank it because the water over there was not fit to drink without some purification. And the purification was turning the water into wine. It purified it. New wine is not fermented. We over here in this country call it grape juice. Over there they call it wine. When I went to Israel in the 70s, they asked us if we would like American wine with our meal. And what it turned out to be was Coca-Cola. They called Coca-Cola American wine. See, different countries have different ways of talking. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which this is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Wow. When that darkness passed from me that day, and true light began to shine, my wife couldn't believe it when I came home sober. First time I'd come home sober in three years. And I came home sober. And and what happened? I got saved. <laughs> the very next Sunday, we were down at the church. And her brother Ralph Taylor baptized us both. My wife asked the Lord to forgive her and save her. And both of us were baptized there. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hath his, hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Hey, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men. Because ye are strong. And the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. The pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that the Antichrist shall come, even now, and that many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now, 
I'm going to pause right there a second between 18 and 19 and tell you this. The last times began when Jesus died on the cross. And those last times been here for now 2,000 years. 2,020 years. We've been in the last times. And they're narrowing down. Hey, they were not from us, but they were not of us. But if they had been of us, they would no, no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. That they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. We see the door in the church today swinging both ways quickly. It's like a flapping door that you go into the little house and push the door and the spring load pops it back. And that's the people that are going into churches today. They come in all on fire for the Lord, but they haven't got the Lord yet. They've got an inkling of the Lord, and they haven't asked the Lord to forgive them yet of their sin and put their sin down. They come in sin laden and stay sin laden. They come in smoking, drinking a few beers during the week, doing a little lying cheating, maybe a little cheating on their wife or husband. And they come into the church and they look like something they're not. The Bible said they're wolves in sheep's clothing. And they'll soon be found out. Now when a man gets saved, he puts down all that stuff. It gets all put away. When I got saved, November 5th in 72, at the very next day, everything in my life, the cursing, swearing, lying, cheating, all that stuff was gone. What did I keep? I kept the cigarettes. What did they do for me? They kept me in a muddle for one year. They kept me beating myself and beating myself up saying, man, I need to throw these down. I need to put these away. Couldn't do it. And then I, back in November, one year from the day I got saved, the Lord said to me, hey, look, listen to me. I'm outdoors at 2 o'clock in the morning going to light a cigarette. And the Lord said to me, I delivered you from them. The same time I delivered you from everything else, Peter. And I threw a cigarette down and stomped it and never lit another one. And God's gave me freedom from that ever since. They went out from us. Why did they go out? Because they weren't of us. But if they had been of us, they would have stayed, no doubt. Maybe they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. How about that? That's verse 19 in chapter um, 2 of First John. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Gary G. Cohan, he is a guy that uh, wrote a lot of stuff in the bottom of this book that was Salem Kirbin's uh, Bible. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Wow! Man, I got to hurry to get done with this. Ah, these things have I written unto you concerning them 
and seduce you. Watch out for them now. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but also that the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And ever as I it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. Wow. First John chapter 3, the end of it. I'm here to tell you, my friends, this is a living book, this Bible. Every word in it is from God. And it is a living book. If you will get in it and, and read it and ask God to show it to you, He will. And you will have a good and prosperous life. We will see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.